afternoon, Lisa. Good afternoon, Andrew. <coughs> what are you doing? I'm being a wonky swing. <laughs> okay. Which is how Doctor Who and the Night Starvation, or whatever what? it's called, Doctor Who suffers from night starvation. The night, night terrors in That's the one, yeah. Night starvation? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's when you wake up in the, in the night and you want a nibble. Right. So, we are... Ooh, look! Look at the box, Lisa. It's scary. Look, it's all bulbous. Mm -hmm. And there's the insides. Mm -hmm. And you've got lenticular cards as well, haven't lenticular you? Lenticular cards. Look, look at Doctor Who's huge, huge reaching hand all reaching out to you. Woo! There he is. So basically, we're um, on... Doctor Who and the Night Terrors. Yes, we're on Series 6. Yes. But I've mm. even found the DWM, mm. which refers to how this season got jiggled around. It did. Now let's get this right. So episodes one and two were as they stood. Yes. Episode three, that's Doctor Who and the Spotty Pirates, was that's gonna not. be episode nine. Yeah. Right. Doctor Who get Doctor Who gets a wife. Mm. Uh, episode four was gonna be episode three. Right. And this, Doctor Who and the Night Starvation, was going to be episode four. Right. So, yeah. Right. And yeah. Stephen Moffat says, uh, We were worried there was not enough outside and too many torches in the first half. OK. And, but to be honest, I, I didn't... And, and also, I think they thought it was a bit dark as well, yeah. so I moved it to the second half. Mm, of the I don't know. Series. But, um, yeah, because that's why on um, A Good Man Goes to War, mm. there's a credit for the Ood. All right. And the Ood aren't in it, because originally in A Good Man Goes to War, the bit where, um, I can't remember what her name is, uh, Francis Barber's character. Eye patch woman. Yes, tries to escape. Yeah. Um, she's stopped by the Ood instead of being stopped by... Uh, the, the spotty pirates. Cubon. Okay. And his beard. So we open with a wonky swing. Um, mm. there's, a, there's a bag lady. She's not a bag lady. She, well, she reminds me of that woman you get at the start of episode one of Juliet Bravo. She's just pulling her shopping yeah, trolley, well, isn't she? Yeah, she's... Well, she's a lady with bags. She's a lady she? with a shopping trolley, yes. And we see George in his deck chair pyjamas. Yeah, he's they're got very, proper little old-fashioned pyjamas there, isn't they're, he? They're very stri yeah. stripey. Yeah. And the first mention of what does he do with things, he puts them in the cupboard. Mm hmm you know, that that's a real catchphrase. Yeah. Now, throughout this episode, because it's a Mark Gatiss one, mm -hmm. you really should play spot the references. Yes. And not just to things like, not just to Doctor Who stories. There no. are There are some, mm -hmm. but as as with Mark, there's 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 other things being hinted at. Mm -hmm. And I said, she'll fuse a light bulb by doing that. <laughs> and she goes, click, 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 yeah, click, click, he, click, he, he click. He wants it switched on and off five times, doesn't yeah. he? That's his thing. And, uh, yeah, you're, uh, that's a very good way to... To blow your light bulb. To get through light bulbs. Mm. Of course, nowadays it'd be a, um energy-saving one, so it wouldn't warm up properly. Yeah, well... That reminds me of... It, um, is it um, a space museum? Haven't you gone into a room and turned the light on? It's taken several minutes to come on. <laughs> And in the sixties, that was a, that was a rather odd lie, but now mm. it's true. Yeah, <laughs> that light over there takes long ages. ages. So please save me from the monsters. Please save me from the monsters. Monsters. Yeah. Mm. So he, he don't like the monsters, but he I don't monsters. I suppose he's quite keen on the Adams family, is he? <laughs> but unle unless he's been watching, um, well, he can't have been watching it because it's missing the monsters that nineteen sixty two mm. thing directed by Mervyn Pinfield. Yeah. Of which there is a clip mm. on a points of view that survives that I've just retweeted from BBC Archive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's about monsters that live in a lake or something. Okay. Um, but and I said there, there's nothing to be scared of. Mm. And then I thought what they should have had then is the, and the bed eats him, <laughs> so the headboard should come down and it should go nom nom nom. Well, that wouldn't really work. And that it? would be <laughs> the end of the episode, and we'd move on. No. <laughs> well. But yeah, um, so the doctor gets gets a psychic paper message mm -hmm. and has to make a house call. Yes. And when they land, you get the first sort of fading in of the tick tock goes the clock music, yes. which is rather good. Yes, it's good. Yes. Do, 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 yes. do, 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 and it's do, it's really cleverly used do, again do, later on do, in the scenes. <laughs> Couldn't do that last note. And, um, yeah, scary bag, bag lady. Mm. And I said, hmm, 
that voiceover on the television, I won't say what they say, but there is a rather unfortunate yes. reference, yes. but never mind. Um, so there's a lot of knocking um, knocking on doors yes. as, as Rory, Amy and Doctor Who go and knock up some people, don't they? Mm-hmm. And I said, evil twins. Yes, like the twins from The Shining. Yeah, so that, there's yeah. a reference. Um, the, the lady says, I need new knees. Yeah. And I imagine Doctor Who says he'll get her some or something. Mm. Uh, get her some cyber knees. And she's called Mrs. Rossiter. Mm. And it, it's only now while taking the notes that I've realised mm. that surely that's a reference to Leonard Rossiter, who's, who's in Rising Damp. Cause, Probably. Because yeah. you've got a landlord in this story as yeah. well, haven't you? Yeah. It's, a, it's a little round the houses, but... Yeah. Might be. Be surprised. Mm-hmm. Now I said, all this weird lighting that you've mm-hmm. got around this this estate or block of flats or whatever it is, mm-hmm. is it night or is it evening? Because if it's night, mm-hmm. there's a lot of yellow light all over the place. It's very well lit, actually. Mm. You can you can see all the details. I think the, what it is is because I wondered that because that when you when they do the light thing, it's yeah. still quite light in the room when the light's yeah. on. But I think, well, it's because you get a shot a bit later of the old lady walking past, and it's yeah. a walkway, yeah. so therefore it would be lit but up. But even when she goes down to do the bins, it's all lit up. Right well, it would be lit up. Well. Flats yeah. are lit up. Yeah, but it is. Well, otherwise you fall down and break your neck or something. Well, it's not lit up round here, is it? Well, we don't can't, live in that flat. Can't see a damn thing in the night. I couldn't yeah. see Andy Priester, and he's about eight foot tall. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get up close to him. Um... And a man with ten cats. Why do we never see this man? Yes, we wouldn't see the man with the ten cats. Well, we just want to see the cats. Oh, yeah. Don't care about the man. Yeah. Um, so Amy and Rory have some lift terror. Mm-hmm. Arg! Mm-hmm. If they disappear down. Um, and um, the bin lady. Um, She's not a bin lady. She's uh, a lady that's gone down <laughs> to the bins. <laughs> and I said, why do the bins eat her? Mm. Because I, I don't really quite understand or how all these other portals... Because I assume they're like portals into George's... Into the wardrobe. In, in, yeah. into a, I think it's people he's scared of, isn't yeah, but, it? But how physically does this work? Does he open up little wormholes or I, what? I don't know. Um, he's got I, very powerful psychic powers, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Very strong psychic powers. And why do the bin bags eat her? Is it a, like a tear of the autons <laughs> and the chair or something? You know? Imagine that, auton bin bags. Because, <laughs> you know... They could smother you, like Joe and her... I was going to say Joe and her Petunia. No, <laughs> Joe and her Daffodil. Yes. Joe and her Petunia is something else. Isn't yes. It? Uh, pantophobia, fear of pants, right? Mm. OK, good line, but it's one of those lines that has a whole different meaning in the US or the UK, don't yes. they? Yes. In here, we're thinking about Doctor Who's pants, aren't we? <laughs> what, what pants does Doctor Who wear, do you I, think? I don't know. Space yeah. pants. Space pants, what, silver ones that yeah. light up? No, not my tongue. <laughs> or just, no, I was going to say tweed ones, that'd be uncomfortable. Well, I, I, I'm thinking that maybe that's, you know that Peter Davison Easter egg? Yeah. Where he's got a beam it's flying from, out yeah, of his, his crutch. Maybe yeah. that's his space pants okay. projecting a beam. Maybe. Because he's detected chocolate. OK. Um, uh, so, yeah, Rory and Amy end up in, in the doll's house. Well, I don't know it's a doll's house yeah. to start with. Oh, and I should have said um, the, the things he, he thinks the lady across the road is a witch. Yes. And I'm almost wishing she, she actually was. <laughs> and we get, there's a whole separate story to be told. Yeah. There. Nothing to do with him at all. <laughs> um, but I like Rory's thing about we're dead, aren't we, again. Yeah. <laughs> Rory always assumes the worst. Yeah. Rory's basically Kenny from South Park. Yeah, isn't by he? this point, yeah. yeah. Um... It, uh, George's lamp gets knocked off, and there's mm. a sound of, bro- of something breaking. Yes. Isn't there? But they pick it up, and it seems to be all right it again. It might be the bulb inside, maybe. Well, nobody picks up the glass no, in I that case. Know. There's going to be broken glass all over the floor. <laughs> nobody sits there and uh, and does that. So, Doctor Who wants to know about the monsters, mm-hmm. and George goes, "Well, it's four episodes. It's 1962, and it's missing." <laughs> um, so you've got the wooden copper pan. Mm-hmm. Solid copper bottoms and real teak handles. Yes. You can put the dinner on, I'll be home in 20 minutes. That was good, wasn't it? That was a great impression of Peter Davison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we saw Sandra last night, we didn't did. she? She was, she was on a whodunit. She, she, watch. she was actually quite good on she de- was. Detect- yeah. detecting on mm-hmm. whodunit, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she did better than um, Gordon Honeycomb. Yeah. And the member of the public. <laughs> the member of the public with his teeth. 
Um, so, Rory's torch. Mm-hmm. I don't know whether they put some sort of filter across the camera or mm-hmm. whether it's just CGI, but when he flashes his torch, yeah. they get a huge, great big, wide, horizontal sort of beam. Did oh, you notice? Yeah, but they like doing that, don't yeah, they? It, they do that a lot in, in Matt's first season. Yeah. Because torches don't do that. No, it's an, it's, a, it's an arty thing, isn't it? Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, you've got the giant eye in the drawer. That's mm-hmm. quite that's quite a nice thing. Yeah. Um, and what's it meant to fit? Because it's a, it's a giant glass eye. It's for a giant doll, isn't it? Yeah, but it doesn't fit the... I don't know. It doesn't fit the dolls know. that are knocking no. about. No, so it's it, for another doll. Unless mm. George has put a glass eye in, because didn't you have an uncle... My grandfather. Your granddad. Yeah, Tell us a... about his glass eye. Come he on. had a glass eye. And what did he used to do? He used to take it out and show it us. <laughs> and chase you around the room. He with didn't it. chase us. We used to run away screaming. <laughs> Why? Why? Because it was. Because it was scary. It was scary and gruesome. So maybe George's granddad has got a glass eye that yeah, he takes maybe. out maybe. and he puts it in the. Or cotton. maybe he's just scared of glass, glass eyes. eyes. Or dolls or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, um, the, so you got the Rubik's cube. Mm-hmm. That, that's nice. Um, and the thing about stop stop letting him watch scary stuff on the yeah. telly, yeah. That, that's a real Mark Gatiss thing. Oh, no, you, you should not stop him watching it. It's good for him, basically. Yeah. And the the line to, about Seven Keys to Doomsday as yes. well. Snow so. White and the Seven Keys to Doomsday. Actually, there is a book now. Yeah. Um, somebody's written the stories for not all of those, but for yeah. some of those. And I think Snow White and the Seven Keys to Doomsday is actually in there. Uh, Time Lord Fairy Tales. We okay. do have it somewhere. Um, so, notice here, Doctor Who and what, what's the man's name? Alex. Is standing there um, mm-hmm. with lots of room between the bed and the cupboard. There's yeah. room for them both to stand there and mm-hmm. have a conversation yeah. and have some camera sort of space as well. Mm-hmm. Later on, that will change. Yes, but I think it's... I, well, when we get to it, I'll say, yeah. but yeah. Uh, so actually, it's quite a big room if you if you look at yeah. it. It's not a little yeah. tiny pokey hole, but um, so you got the landlord and his dog come in. Mm, Bernard. Bernard. Is that a reference to Quatermass? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there aren't many Bernards around, really, are there? So um, George has got loads of robot toys, yes. hasn't he? Yes. Including the one from Are You Being Served? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the robot with the screen on its chest which mm. projects like sort of space or something like yeah. that because Mrs. Slocum thinks it's Star Trek, isn't it? Yes. That's when they go and work in the toy in the department. Toy department yeah. Um, so yeah, I said Bernard Quatermass, dog. Yeah, mm. Quatermass and the dog. Um, so the cupboard is off the scale, says Doctor mm-hmm. Who. What scale? Yeah, I don't. What know. scale is he measuring it? Is he know. measuring energy, mm. psychicness, scariness? What is he? What he's is he measuring? Um, dreadful shirts. Not specified. It is not specified. The order specifies midnight. And it, all this thing about don't open the cupboard. Mm-hmm. Well, well, Doctor Who. Um, you know, surely all his ties are in there, and he, he'd need to wear them if he had to go to a function or Where's something. Whose ties? Like. George's ties. You don't wear ties. Huh? All little boys should He's wear eight. ties. They go to school. I had to wear. I don't wear uniform. No, we ties at that age. They do wear uniform, yeah. but not ties. They have like polo shirts. You see, this is why standards have and dropped. Jump yeah, and there's no knob for Rory, is there, on the door? <laughs> no. Rory's knobless. I don't know whether that's <laughs> whether that's a, a subtle. No, it's of, it's a doll's house. You don't have a. You don't have, have a knob. Don't have a knob on the inside. There's, there's no knobs on the inside. All right. <laughs> In case all the dolls get out. Um, and, and I, so the, the doctor immediately starts to make tea. Yeah. So he, ne- he does. He does manage to finish it, doesn't yeah. he? Because he has a, su- a sip later. Yeah. And you don't put the milk away though, no. that's a really big bugbear of mine. There's, there's a line about empires of glass, yes. and, and that's a Hartnell missing adventure, it is. isn't it? Yeah. A Stephen job. And yeah. Stephen and, v- and Vicky. Is it? Right. Yeah, Andy Lane. Um, so, monsters are real, you're not from social services. That's a mm. nice sort of collision. The whole children's laughter on the soundtrack is yeah. very sappho and still, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and that is partially what we're aiming at here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how well it, it gets pulled off in all of the shots. I mean, in in in, in some ways, I, I'd like more of this, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's that thing about sort of contrasting everyday life yeah. with weirdness, weirdness, isn't it? Yeah. So fair yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So what do you think of the giant dolls then? They're a little bit freaky, but they yeah. could actually be freakier, yeah. I think. Because yeah. they're sort of peg dolls, they're yeah. called, aren't they? And they don't really have... And I can understand why they've done this totally, because it makes it simpler to make the um, mm. cloth of the mask. But they haven't really got proper faces. And I actually think that dolls with proper faces and the eyes and everything well, sort of slightly smiley well, like the dolls you have when you, if you're a, a child about Hamble or something yeah, that from Play School yeah. where these are these are a bit more featureless which makes them easier to do yeah. I understand why but you lose a little bit of the scare I think marks for the photo album I mean they're having really wonky photos yeah. in some of them <laughs> Because um, is that that thing that often you get photos that are mm. really well taken, yeah. don't you? especially portrait photos. Mm-hmm. But these, they're all on a on on the cock, aren't yeah. they? So that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing on the telly apart from Bergerac in a film. Mm. I wonder what episode of Bergerac it was. I, I don't know. know you got a quick. We only got a quick glimpse of the car, didn't you? So yeah, I, I could didn't, be virtually anyone. By the way, since that's thirty years old. It's not the one directed by Graham Harper with Malloy in oh, it, is it? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I that's can't tell point. from that shot. In the Doctor Who universe, who directs Bergerac, and who stars in Bergerac? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Louise. I think we've... Louise Jameson being in Bergerac. That mm. would be confusing to Doctor Who. We'd go, it's Leela! <laughs> <laughs> and you might have a... I don't know. <laughs> you might have a twinge yes. of, re- of regret. Okay. Okay. Um, so the landlord man gets his feet in the carpet yeah. and he gets sucked away. Mm-hmm. And The dog's not bothered at all. And the dog, dog is not, not bothered. And I said, how is George managing to do that? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Bernard is not bothered at all. Because the... Bloke says, Bernard, help me. And what's Bernard going to do? Bernard's going, what? What can I do? What's he going to do? Lick him? Yeah. So, how old is George? Mm -hmm. And I have to put, how exactly did this work? Mm -hmm. Biology. biology, Was he actually born? Because there's there's a picture of him as a day old. Yeah. So So he just sort of appears, Does he appear as if by magic, poof, and all the the nurses... Because presumably this was in a hospital. I, I... so were all the nurses confused? I don't know. Or did did he suddenly appear in 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 the ladies' belly mm. a day before or something <laughs> like that? I, I I don't want to get too personal about no. this, but Mark, how did it work? Yes. What happened on that day? Yeah, if you see this video, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Probably I, not what I that want. I want a diagram, please. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> um. And I like the sort of zoom in on evil George when they realise that... not evil. I know, but the zoom in is the, yeah. is the grammar of a yeah. director mm. saying that he's the threat, isn't it? You know, he like, look, it's just... It's, I mean, the, the, the little boy... Well, he's not a little boy anymore. He must be about 17 by now. But mm. the boy that plays him is he's a really good actor. Yeah. It's, it's it's not sort of... And I think he's done over the top. He's... A, he's mm. You know, he... He's got all, he, it's the way he looks at people. He's yeah, he's very good. And then they, when they get sucked into the cupboard, suddenly the cupboard is about three foot closer to the bed. Yes, but I think that just moves when just for a couple of for, shots. Yeah, it's only for the side shots. Yeah. Because you're having to get the cupboard and the bed yeah, in the same yeah. shot, and it's the only yeah. camera I, position where you get that. I would assume the rest of the time it's shot it's, either from yeah. inside the cupboard yeah. or sitting on top of the bed. But I would assume that is because yeah. of all the psychic energy, so it sort of pulled it forward, <laughs> and then it goes no, back. It's it, it's purely just for the cameras. Well, yeah, but it's you know what yeah. can you do? Because you're not going to put the cameraman in the cupboard unless he's been very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Don't want to know um, that. So the landlord becomes a doll. Mm-hmm. Is he a girl doll? He turns. He's a boy into, doll. He's a ball doll. Well, they're all the sort of. It's hard to with, tell. With long hair. The only one you can tell is is, is specifically male. He's the one that's dressed as a soldier. I was going to say. I say. I, say I like the the soldier one. Yeah. But, yeah. The red coat. It, was he some mm-hmm. soldier that came to the door as well? Don't I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or did he have a soldier toy? I said inside the doll's house is very celestial toy maker, of mm-hmm. course, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And like think just things like the giant cotton reel. Is a nice little prop. Yeah. Or the big yeah. scissors. Mm-hmm. Um, are you laughing at big scissors? Big blunt scissors. So when Amy becomes a doll, she gets a little mop cap thing. She does. Thing, doesn't yeah. it? Where does that come from? That, well, I think that's to help you realise which one is her. Yeah. Because they've all got sort of slightly reddish hair. Well, yeah. Her hair's very red, that doll. So they give her a little mop cap, so, mop camera, so that you can tell. Yeah. But she should have had a hanky on her head beforehand when she was being a... What, what it should have been is that Amy... 
and Rory should have been going down the beach or something and Amy had a knotted hanky and, and Rory had rolled up trousers or something. So <laughs> okay. that, and that, that's the only way I can think about right. how you could have it's, got... It's just so you can tell which one it I is. Know. Um, so I wrote, again, I wrote, how does it actually work? Yeah. Um, and that, like the, the attacking with the giant scissors. Mm. And I can imagine Mark Gatiss thinking, edge of destruction. Yes. <laughs> Big scissors. Big scissors. And they got, you, did you notice they've sort of got the crinkly edge? Yeah. So they're the ones that when you cut paper, it cuts it all crinkly. Yeah. Which used to be a thing. Pinking shears. They're not pinking shears. No, they're not. They're just crinkly. No, they're crinkly shears. Oh, crinkly. They're not pinking shears. Pinking shears are used in tailoring. All right. And I said, soldier are good, tick, brackets, the mind robber. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, because the soldier, yeah. soldier boy's in the mind robber. Either that or, or, or Camberwick Green. Yeah. Could, could, could be Captain Snort or something. You know. <laughs> um, why don't all the what? Don't know. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's there's, always one there's line. There's always one line. So... Tr- <laughs> Triumphant music as the old lady, so we get all the. No, well, yeah, but you haven't said actually what happens. Well, well just... Cause there seems to be a thing in this series because you get it later on in um, closing time as well. In Doctor Who li- works in a shop. Yes. Yeah. Of um, fathers and sons and the love of a father for his son. And that's basically what saves the, the, the day. Alex tells George that he loves him and he hugs him and yeah. everything's all right. Yeah. Love wins the day. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just like the the um, c- comparison, the um, juxtaposition—that's right. a good word. Yes. As you get this wonderful triumphant music, yeah. as all is good, as an old lady wakes up in a pile of dirty old bin bags. Yes. I don't think she thinks it's very triumphant from her point of no. view. And the nice dead pan was I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And even Bernard seems mildly happy as he yeah. starts slobbering. He licks, doesn't he? He licks his owner, and hopefully he'll be in a nicer person. All yeah, right. right. Will he be? Will he be better? No, probably not. Well, he, he, perhaps if he watched more Bergerac, he could like mm. he could learn the ways of of goodness. <laughs> okay, events like Bergerac is <laughs> a is a force for good, but yeah. Don't he might just learn the ways of Charlie Hungford. All right. What what would philandering he doesn't philander what does he do he's, he just, he's always trying to do business dodgy. deals yeah, like business is always on his mind unquote so George is fine just mm. like that and I wrote mm. Tommy Cooper because <laughs> <laughs> of course Doctor Who wears a fez yeah, yeah. so I just like the line just like that okay. is, is, is Tommy Cooper um, George will be whatever you want him to be mm-hmm I hope that's not literally true because what if they wanted a video recorder one year and he just turns into a video recorder? No, it, it, that's not quite what it means, is it? You have to put the tape in somewhere. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and be, because of the season swapping around, mm-hmm. there's a very obvious use of the phrase in the flesh yeah. as well. Because oh, now right, this yeah. story is after. Yes, yes, all the flesh the stuff. Flesh, the flesh stuff. Mm-hmm. And then we fade out on tick tock goes the clock. Do 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 do. Even for the dog stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I couldn't remember the middle bit. I should have written it written it down. But what do you think? Yeah, I like it. It's, yeah. it's a very traditional kind of mm. story. Yeah. Um, as you would expect from Mark Gatiss. But yeah, it's it's a good one. I like it. Yeah. As I said, I I would like, frankly, I would have liked even more Doll's House stuff. Yeah, um, yeah I, but it's I, I difficult have, yeah. splitting this story, isn't it? But so. I find that often with Mark Gatiss things, there's an awful lot of very good ideas thrown in, mm. which maybe actually need a bit more room to breathe. Because yeah. I will say that about Victory of the Daleks, yeah. don't I? Mm-hmm. That there's too much going on for one episode, yeah. but not quite enough for two episodes. Mm-hmm. It, it's weird. Yeah. Just an extra five or ten minutes here, I think. Mm-hmm. I think would would really work to its advantage. Yeah. But that that's the things of the slot, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I appreciate the sort of sapphire and steelness of it, and and, mm. and some some nice ideas. But yes. yeah. so there we are. Um, do we know what we're doing next? We'll decide. Um, we? No, don't, don't, don't we, say. We it do yet. know what we're doing next. Well, yes. we know. We, we just know. won't say. We're not saying. So- Yes, well, something from series we'll seven. Make, we'll make it a hand cliffer, shall we? A hand cliffer. Okay, yeah. yeah. What a good idea. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.